Welcome back everyone, theCUBE live on the ground floor here in Chicago for KubeCon, CNCF Cloud Native Founders. KubeCon and theCUBE is here. I'm John Furrier with your host with Rob Strecce, Savannah Peterson, and introducing Joe Peterson tomorrow, our new industry analyst that's collaborating with us. We've got a great guest here talking about VMware Tanzu, CUBE alumni back from the old big data <laughs> days. Dan Basquette, Director of Developer Relations at VMware Tanzu. Thanks for coming back on. Love the shirt, the Spider-Man shirt. Got to uh, represent the Marvel Universe. It's been a long time. Welcome back to theCUBE. It's been, been uh, almost 10 years. Yes, as I said earlier, a little, less, <laughs> a little more gray now. Well, what Rob and I have been pontificating on theCUBE and celebrating is the fact that big data promises are coming true now with AI. You're starting to see a lot more of those workloads having AI enabled or AI native. Certainly AI wrappers are popular with, with OpenAI and these other models, so super exciting time. I know Tanzu, you guys are in the middle of that wave too, the modernization of mm -hmm. cloud. Give us the update on what's going on with you. Uh, really starting to, I think we've uh, taken a step back from uh, developer, 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 and focusing on the application lifecycle, uh, develop, operate, optimize, and really trying to enable that. and, and you're still giving the developers something to make them happy and make their life easier, let them code, but you're, let, you're enabling another team to give that to them. What's the current state of the hybrid world now with containers and Kubernetes? What's your view of where it's at now? What's the current state of the union? Um, I mean, it's a broad, broad, broad universe, <laughs> right? So it's, uh, it's definitely an inter interesting time. I think uh, from a developer perspective, it's probably a bit too much, right? That's so, so much to take in. I look at like the CNCF uh, Kubernetes training for developers. There's a lot to it. And that I don't really don't believe they sh developers should have to know that much about what they're deploying on. They should know how to write their code, commit their code, and move on. And, and to that effect, you're you're a contributor to Backstage as well, and and I think. They made some steps and there was some announcements that, you know, with the Spotify code that they were giving to go from you know, 70 steps down to three steps or something like that to get up and running. Do you see that getting even better to help give guardrails within, because I know you use that within the Tanzu uh, architecture as well, right? Yeah, I definitely see the number of steps decreasing. So one of the things we're looking at as we look at more of that next level up, is that uh, VMware Explorer in Vegas released the Tanzu application engine and this idea of a application specific abstraction called Spaces. And so it lets the platform engineers basically define governance, compliance, and feature sets of a space. And then if an, if an application developer wants to deploy, they know what the requirements they have, they can now deploy to a space and where that goes into your Kubernetes farm it sort of depends on where those spaces live. What's your view of platform engineering? We hear a lot of DevOps versus platform engineering discussions. Um, what are some of the things you're seeing in platform engineering that's jumping out at you in terms of what's critical about it and what's, what, what areas need to be improved or filled, gaps filled or developed? I mean, I, I think it's definitely a uh, growing field. I mean, I came from the I came from the old Pivotal company and the VMware acquisition. So, one of Pivotal's big things was growing that platform engineering team with Cloud Foundry, and really seeing that take off in the Kubernetes world as well. So, definitely see it as that uh, it's sort of their job to ingest all of what we see around at this kind of conference, building the best platform for developers to move forward, and letting them develop. I think some of the big pieces of it right now, it's security, 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 right? So vulnerability scanning, S-bombs, just all of that security, fee, all those security features. There's a lot of overhead in managing all that stuff. I and mean, that seems to be the core theme, Rob. Right. Um, what's your take on the container management and the management side? Because if platform engineering is to enable developers, as you had pointed out earlier, okay, let developers develop and right. let the platform engineering teams do their thing. Sounds like you were saying, right? So, I mean, I simplified a little bit, but okay, what, what's the management side look like? How do you manage all this? Yeah, from a management standpoint, we've we come out with something called Tanzu Hub. It's sort of this consolidation point for data, from data from uh, the developer platform or 
our cloud health costing analysis. So all this data can come in. Kubernetes management comes into that as well. So now you have this central point where I can create Kubernetes clusters, create spaces, and have costing information available immediately. So what's, what's that costing application team? And, and you were also, I, just remembering back to Explore as we were there, you, you talked about, uh, or there was the Tanzu data service as well. How is that helping organizations that are in a Kubernetes environment you know, really move towards AI, I guess you could say? Yeah, so the data services are adding multiple features around, around the AI. So from a green pump perspective, that's using it as a vector database, or they're adding some, uh, definitely some learning, AI learning technology into it as well. Um, I think uh, the biggest piece of that is just sort of the infrastructure around the AI that we can help provide. The use cases for Edge come out a lot, it came out a lot of VMware Explorer, Tanzu has that aspect of it. What's the Edge look like now from a Tanzu perspective? What's the update there? Uh, from an edge perspective, we're, we're looking at a couple different ways. So you still sort of have that SaaS management model, if that makes sense. We're also doing sort of a self-managed model for Kubernetes management at the edge or deployment. So you sort of get to pick the, which, whichever one makes the most sense for you. Yeah. You, you mentioned that costing piece of it. Is that coming from the CFO or is that more of technical cost? What's the, what's the cost equation look like? Uh, it's, in this case, it's cloud costs, it's so. Just, it's, not, it's financial dollars it's, and cents. Yes, yes, Not definitely. technical debt, we're not getting no, Not identity. technical debt, it's, <laughs> this uh, application yeah. runs on these systems, these clusters, it's costing me $3,000 a week or whatever. The question I get a lot on theCUBE, Rob and I get this a lot from folks is, you know, where, where are the areas that platform engineers need to pay attention, extra attention to? Because uh, it's, you know, you're enabling a lot of people to do work with developers. Uh, and if you miss a piece of it, or don't optimize for certain use cases, um, you could have a systematic failure or potential downtime. What are, are the areas that people should pay attention to the most in I, platform engineering? I mean, for me, I, I use the simple answer is it depends, but it depends on what your developers want and need. So, hey, for platform engineering, the most important thing is to talk to the developers, find out what they need, and start to bring those ideas back into your system and help, and help build it out. And that's a big piece of that is something like Backstage we mentioned earlier. So yeah. we have the Tanzu Developer Portal, which is based on Backstage. And that basically lets all the, all the data from the developers be surfaced in a single spot, right? So it's something they can use, but something platform engineering can provide. Yeah, and, and kind of, I guess, springboarding off of platform engineering is the, the fact that, you know, with Gen AI coming out and with all of these new tooling and everything else that needs to be there, what are some of the skill sets that you're seeing that are, are kind of changing or evolving as people get into more of these AI-based applications? I'm definitely seeing those data science type folks in the organization sort of moving a little more that, that direction. But from a platform engineering and the developer space, it's probably more around, more around like un just understanding all those technologies and what it means to deploy and train models and what types of systems and GPUs do I need to make this all work. Yeah, so and, and you also have Spring as well, and there's, there, I think it was announced with Spring AI, and how does that fit into this entire, entire? Yeah, so normally when we think of AI programming, it's a lot of Python, right? And it ha Python has basically tools that allow you to write once and then run on different models. Spring AI, Spring AI brings that idea to the Spring world, so now Java Spring developers can basically write to the Spring API and then deploy different models on the back end and, and not have to rewrite their code. So really that spring value proposition. So real advances on that from the developer perspective, this abstraction you guys are doing there. Um, how's that going so far? What's the feedback been? Uh, well, it, we just announced it at VMworld in Vegas and got great feedback there and we had a training session it was just packed wall to wall. And, if one person got up, there's a person to fill that seat immediately. So it's been, it's been a lot of good feedback and 
and a lot of good progress on the project since then. I really, uh, AI does give the Java community a big boost, you know, in these new areas. A lot of glue layers kind of, can the, when you have these abstractions, you guys with the application platform, it's interesting, some of the, these problems get solved. What are some of the key things that you guys are seeing with the platform you have that customers are resonating the most with? What's jumping out, uh, what's, what's jumping out at you and saying from a customer standpoint, what are they into if when you look at the, the Tanzu application platform? Uh, I think the secure soft, the whole idea of a secure software supply chain. So the ability to plug, plug in my CI CD tools on the, into this and then plug in the security tools I want to use and I think the big thing with our, with our model is if something like a base image for a, your OS changes, in a typical pipeline, I'm restarting the whole process. Right? With our model, just that process, notices the change, kicks off, rebuilds the container, moves it to your container registry, and then you can redeploy it. So it's, it's a model where in each individual step can be kicked off based on some input. So time savings is a huge, huge benefit. Definitely. Yeah, and, and, and you know, the other thing that comes up, you mentioned this uh, earlier, I wanted to kind of bring it back, Rob, yep. to our earlier kickoff, we kicked off the show, uh, keynote review. This idea of an end-to-end -end becomes a huge part of the spectrum of people thinking about the solution workload. Because at the end of the day, you want to just build and deploy your workload. Yes. A lot of other stuff going on under the covers. See a push. <laughs> yes. right. So now this end-to-end, -end, how important is that end-to-end -end workload view? And what, what do, how can companies get their people trained more to think like that? What are you seeing for best practices or mindset shifts? I mean, I, I think it's very important because the, what we're seeing, and if you look at our state of Kubernetes report, it's like almost 100% of the companies saw value in Kubernetes but then only 50% of the companies said, we have people that are trained to, to do this stuff. And that includes the developers, right? So if you're asking way too much of the developers, you're never going to get your code out the door. So th the idea is, hey, let's we can build this platform so the, the developers can just code, just push their code. They don't, have to un they don't have to understand any of the Kubernetes infrastructure or plumbing. It makes their life a lot easier. Right, if they want to get into that, fine, but most of the time they don't. So basically you're saying that the, the big blocker or the, the, the problem is, is that people just don't understand the infrastructure it, well it's enough. It's the complexity, right? We've, we've never really asked the developer to understand the infrastructure like we are now. Most and don't even want to know It's almost like we've gone it. backwards. Yeah, and in what, what way? By making them learn we're, hardware? We, <laughs> yeah, well, we, yeah we're, we're, we're exposing the infrastructure and gateways and all this stuff to the developer. And they're normally just push, pushing their code, right? Yeah. They're not, they've never had to understand this stuff before. Right, especially as they go towards microservices and things of that nature. And it would seem that, again, bringing kind of Spring and Tanzu together kind of tries to overcome that, right? Is that what you guys are aiming at? Is, hey, how, you're going to go and build your ML AI here, let me give you the tooling to go just do the coding. Yeah, I mean, we definitely have a huge install base of Spring, right, so, and, we, and as director of developer relations, so I have a team of developer advocates, yeah. and we're really sending that team out to major clients and letting them talk about Spring and the new ways to use things and AI, right, and developing that, right, and basically developing that desire to one yeah. bring, come to us for more information, or the, even the products. So it's sort well, of Dan, a fun you're doing time. Doing a great job because I, I will tell the people watching here at VMware Explore, we had the cube there. Uh, we weren't at your event with, with broadcasting, but we saw firsthand how packed it was. You guys ran the day before VMware Explore. Yes, your Spring One show. Spring One, and was it was jam packed. packed. To the walls, the energy yes. was high. Um, people had a spring in their step, Rob, as we say, you know. Um, it was the first year yeah. of combining it with, with Explorer, so Good we, call. it's Good. interesting to see, this two different crowds, right? It's a yeah. developer crowd versus operations crowd. Yeah. So yeah. we weren't sure how that was going to work out, and it was yeah. beyond yeah. expectations. Cultural, the cultural revolution of DevOps finally crossed the chasm, yeah. Rob. Yeah, in DevOps and platform and engineering I, yeah. coming together. And I, I talked yeah. to somebody out in the hallway during the conference, and it was, a, a developer who said, hey, I, I talked to my, and went out to dinner with my operations team, 
and I've never really met them before. Yeah. So it's like cats we're building together. relationships <laughs> <laughs> inside the companies that didn't exist. Uh, uh, awesome, well congratulations, um, big success, and again, Platform engineering, we're huge fans of it. We see there's a huge opportunity to modernize the old IT, bring it in, and AI is a gift, and it's going to be an opportunity uh, to, to help. Definitely. Set the table and let developers do what they do. Develop. And the ones that want to get involved in the hardware, that's called DevOps. Welcome yeah. to the party. <laughs> yes. Yeah, the door's always open, right? You know, you want to learn the infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, especially with private AI, and you know, we're, we're seeing a lot of that on-prem. I mean, it, it definitely Yeah, it's the, I mean, that's, AI is sort of interesting, right? Because there's a lot, there's a lot of these coding tools out there, but now you're starting to see companies a little worried about using yeah. some of those, like Copilot and some of these tools. Right. So that's what private AI is designed for that purpose. So let's, let's bring it in, let's train it on our code, our documentation, so that when you need help developing something, it's coming from our historical developers. And yeah, we appreciate you coming on theCUBE and uh, sharing. We're going to definitely be following more of what you're doing. We're totally interested in it. We're on the same page, so to speak. Last minute we have left. Put a plug in for what you're working on, the key things in your job, Tanzu platform, and what's going on in dev, dev relations. Uh, I think uh, the, the biggest thing now is just getting people on board with that platform engineering, getting on that train, and understanding like, what it takes to build a platform that developers will love. So we're working on that, working with Spring developers to make that a reality, and working to make our platform the best place to run Spring, period. Right. Dan Basket, Director of Developer Relations at VMware, Tanzu at VMware, great to have you on theCUBE. We'll be back with more coverage here in Chicago after this short break, I'm John Furrier with Rob Stretche and Savannah Peterson and a lot more coming right after this break. <laughs>